sold any ammunition to anybody who has ever used his ammunition for any unlawful purpose whatsoever. Back on August 27th of last year, 2017, Doug very briefly met Mr. Paddock who inquired about purchasing some ammunition. There was absolutely nothing suspicious about that interaction. Then in September of 2017, Doug sold 720 rounds of tracer ammunition to Mr. Paddock. That ammunition was not modified in any way whatsoever from the manufacturer's specs. Doug then provided a box for Mr. Paddock to carry that ammunition as he left. That box happened to contain Doug's personal information, including his name and his address. There was absolutely nothing about that transaction that arose any suspicion whatsoever for Doug. This was a routine transaction to purchase a routine type of ammunition that is available in many different retail outlets throughout the state of Arizona. After that transaction, Doug had absolutely no further contact with Mr. Paddock. They basically had one transaction and one transaction only. To the best of our knowledge, none of the ammunition that Doug sold to Mr. Paddock was used at all in the tragedy that occurred in Las Vegas. Doug was then contacted by both ATF and the FBI approximately 11 hours after the Las Vegas massacre. Doug was questioned about selling ammunition to Mr. Paddock. Doug was fully cooperative then. He spoke with authorities without any hesitation. He answered all of their questions truthfully, and he actually offered some samples of the exact type of ammunition that he sold to Mr. Paddock. He spoke to the authorities on four separate occasions at their request. He answered all of their questions. He answered their questions truthfully and fully. And he remains, to this day, fully cooperative to discuss any aspect of his interaction with Mr. Paddock. The reason Doug opts to speak today to the press is basically just to protect his public reputation. And to also ensure that the true facts come to light about this very, very limited and frankly irrelevant role in the tragedy that occurred in Las Vegas. Now, I will call on people for questions if you have questions of myself or Doug or Attorney Andrew Markintel. So please raise your hand if you have questions. Okay, we got one over here. Please say uh, who you are and who the question is addressed sure. to. Sure, thank you, Mark. Uh, Steve Gregory, KFI, ABC News, Los Angeles. Uh, the question is for Doug. I, I'm curious if you saw the news reports about the shooting going on in Las Vegas, and if you, in your mind, had put together the fact that you had that interaction with him, or that, that, that you, you sold ammunition, the guy was being ID'd hours after the shooting, did you put any kind of connection no, together I, on your I, own? I, please step to the mic. Right. I, I didn't even know the shooting had gone on. I start, you, I'm sorry, could you step a little closer? I, I start you. work at 6 o'clock in the morning, Okay. and I hadn't even seen the news. Uh, when I got the phone call, that's when I found out when I was talking to the federal agents. And what was your initial reaction when you got that call from feds? Revulsion, sickness, uh, horrified that this man would do something like that. Probably one of the most horrible things I've ever been told or heard of. Did you and did you feel at that point? Did you feel like you could have been liable or responsible in any way, shape, or oh, no. form for what happened? No. no. Any other questions? Thank you. Question over here. Jasmine Gonzalez with Univision Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, my question is for you, sir. Um, the the amount of ammunition that you sold to Mr. Paddock was it something like because you sold like seven hundred ammunitions, correct? Seven hundred and twenty rounds. Okay. Uh, is that something common, like somebody to purchase that? amount of ammunition or was it something strange for you? Very common. Very, Very common. common. Okay, was it wasn't something like requested like custom made or this because I know on your no, page. No. What what he bought was surplus US military. 
tracer ammunition. Okay. 600 rounds, 762 NATO M62, manufactured by Lake City. 120 rounds, 556 M196, uh, manufactured by Lake City in the original packaging. Okay, lastly on my part, um, I know on your website says that you actually talk to your customers uh, to place an order and also ask them uh, for what they're gonna use the ammunition. Did they, did you discuss that with Mr. Paddock? Yes, he said that he was gonna go out to the desert and put on a light show either with or for his friends. I can't remember whether he used the word with or for, but he said that he was gonna go out and shoot it at night with friends. Thank you, we got a question over here. Was the Could you please state your name yes. and who the question is for? My name is Rachel Crosby. I'm with the Las Vegas Review Journal and newspaper in Las Vegas. Uh, was when you had this transaction with Mr. Paddock, was this in person? And if so, can you describe his uh, mannerisms? Was anything abnormal to you? Uh, it, it was in person. Uh, he took my business card at the law fair at the Phoenix Gun Show. He called me the Tuesday after the weekend. Uh, he called me the first time at work. I told him I couldn't talk to him, uh, that I was at work. Uh, he called me back after 3 o'clock when I told him to, and he wanted my address, so I gave it to him. And then uh, he got lost on the way in, so that was the third time I talked to him. He pulled up uh, very well-dressed, very well-groomed, very polite, very respectful, told me what he wanted. I gathered it up, put it in a box, told him what he owed me. He paid me, put it in his car, and drove away. At no, at no time did I see anything suspicious or, or odd or any kind of a tell, any, anything that would set off an alarm. And just for background, it's common for customers to come by your house to pick no, up? No, it's not common at all. I, I, have, I have to trust them. Uh, maybe once every two or three months. And typical transactions happen, you said it's not common that they come in. Either at a gun show or I'll ship to them. Next question over here. Yeah, Julio Cisneros from Telemundo. When he came to buy the ammunition, uh, by was he by himself or some, he was, someone else? He was alone. We have any other qu question in the back over here, and then we'll go over here after that question. Yeah, in general, I'm just curious how your life has changed after all of this has happened and you've been associated with it, if it has at all. Uh, it's changed quite a bit since my name was released. Uh, I've had people pounding on my door, death threats, uh, one woman screaming through my door that I should be killed and I should die. Um, it's been not a lot of fun, quite frankly. If, if you could say one thing to the public, what would it be just about this whole situation? I had no, no contribution to what Paddock did. I had no way to see into his mind. Uh, the product that I sold him uh, had absolutely nothing to do with what he did. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a vendor, a uh, merchant, whose name was released. And, uh, okay, we'll go over here, and then back over here, and then over here. Who the hell's are still here? Uh, my question is, and I may have missed this detail in, in the narrative, but was the ammunition uh, also found in the, in the room, or just the box? I do not, I don't know. I believe the box, I know the box was, but I don't know about the ammunition. And how much uh, did it pay for that? I don't, I don't remember. Was it a hundreds, thousands? Hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah. Next question over here, then back here, then I think you had a question. Okay. Where? You had said to your knowledge that the, am the ammo was not used. Is, does that mean it was not fired? It, it, was, it wasn't it was fired. Yeah, it's tracer ammunition. So basically tracer is, has a magnesium flare in the base of it. So when it leaves the barrel, it puts approximately a one foot long red flame out. So you can see where it's coming from and where it's going to. Over here. Yeah. Um, name is Wag Oak. I'm I'm independent journalist. My questions can you for speak up a little bit. Yes, uh, independent journalist. My my questions for Mr. Hake. Um, have you ha has the MGM staff or any legal representation from MGM reached out to you or your no, lawyer? No. Okay. Okay. Question over here. So, how do you guys know that this? We would, have, we would have seen red streaks coming from the window. There were red streaks coming from the window. Yeah, it's, it's probably important to say. But the authorities didn't say mm -hmm. that, right? Or, or, or did the authorities make that, that determination? We haven't, we haven't asked them any right, questions. Right. They've only been asked. But I think it's important to note that 
uh, it's probably a, a bad thing that the ammunition that uh, Doug sold was not used. If that ammunition had been used, it would have been far easier to locate the direction of the shooter, where the rounds were coming from, and it would have been much easier for the people on the ground to actually effectively find cover. So um, his ammunition wasn't used, but as it turns out, it probably would have been less of a tragedy. Fewer people would have died had that tracer ammunition been used. All right, who, did we have a next up? Are we, were you uh, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to ask a follow-up. So you okay. met him at the gun show. I met him first at the Las Vegas gun show. Uh -huh. uh, you saw it from Mike's that, that he, I didn't physically meet him at the Las, at the Las Vegas gun show. Uh, the guy behind my table did. Uh, I did meet him at the Phoenix gun show where, where he took a business card because I didn't have the quantity of 7.62 tracing that he wanted. Uh, at that time, I got no bad feelings about him. Uh, the assessment was good. That's when I allowed him to call me to swing by my home. All right, let's go to the Dodgers fan next. Uh, Step to the mics, please. I, I was shocked that I, my name was the only one that was not really redacted. Uh, it's, uh, focused all the attention on me. Um, so. How did you find out that were you like sitting at the breakfast table? Like, I was at work, and, and then my cell phone started to explode with phone calls. So. Have you ever? Have you ever yes, asked I have. Someone who hasn't asked a question. Danielle Fox, 10 okay, years here Danielle. in Phoenix. Um, so, for somebody who doesn't know, what is this ammo used for? Like typically, if it wasn't. Typically, it's used by the military to allow the gunner to <laughs> guide his fire into a target. Uh, civilians routinely use it as recreation. And then, second question, kind of, what happens from here with you guys? Just kind of, is there any type of legal action in terms of your name being released, or? Um, if the authorities have questions that they want to ask of Doug, then presumably they will contact me, and I will set up a time to bring him in, and they can ask some questions about anything involving his uh, interactions with Mr. Paddock. Um, and so that, other than that, I think that this is probably a, uh, a story that's reached its end. Over here. Just following up on that, I mean, is there any legal recourse um, to take in terms of them releasing his name, not redacting? You know, there could be legal recourse because probably somebody failed to uh, redact his name and that's caused some problems for Doug. But um, my, my understanding at this time is it's not something we're likely to pursue. It's just the kind of thing that happens in life. and. Uh, he feels bad about it. It's something he wishes he could have prevented. Um, but on the other hand, there are many people who interacted with Mr. Paddock in the days before this tragedy, and none of them were able to determine that this guy was uh, just getting ready to do some horrible act. And so uh, it's just too much to ask of, uh, of Doug here to just be able to figure this out in what's otherwise a very routine transaction. Has anybody not asked a question yet who's, who has a question? Back here. How long total do you, I'm Melissa Glacius, ABC 15, how long total do you think you spoke to the FBI about this? Probably about six, seven, eight hours altogether, over four different occasions. Any other questions from anybody who hasn't asked? Over here. Yes, I, I hope today, and it's not doing it's one thing, when people realize that I wasn't in collusion with, with Patty, that I was not in any way, shape, or form associated with the horrible crime that he committed. And how does that make you feel you step up? Day -day? I, I'm sorry, what? How does that make you feel when you day that you're getting these type of these death threats? Death threats? I've had death threats, yes. That makes me feel horrible that, that people need to do their research and think rather than just react this early. All right, so we'll, we'll start over here, then we'll make one trip across, and then that'll be the end of the press conference. So if you have questions along the way, raise your hand. So this, is a, this, this, this was a side job, right? The, it's it's a hobby. hobby. Yeah, it's I, a hobby. Uh, please, please, are you, I'm sorry, please step it, up. It's a hobby. hobby. Okay, so, so uh, what do you do for a living? And I'm an engineer. Oh, um, what's the what's, what's, what's origin? Aerospace. Okay, and, 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 and are you still selling ammo? Or? No. I stepped back. Okay, any questions? Okay. Well, do you think you'll want to ever get back into selling ammunition or weapons or something? I, I, I don't sell weapons. Um, at this time, I don't know. I, I truly don't know. 
Any other questions moving this direction? Nothing, nothing, nothing over here. Are you taking any legal action on anyone? No, I don't know who I could go after for anything, and why would I? Any other question over here? Could you please explain for, for the uh, viewers that, you know, that there's not a license needed to buy or sell this ammunition? In the state of Arizona, uh, it's perfectly legal to own, sell, and possess, and fire tracer ammunition. ammunition. Uh, there is no federal or state license required to transfer ammunition. So, so long as the person is not a, a prohibited possessor legally, and Doug certainly wasn't, and had no reason to believe Mr. Paddock was. Okay, go in this direction. Okay, uh, in a previous press conference, uh, Sheriff Lombardo said that they're going to commit an arrest in, the, in uh, on 60 days. And the, that was one of the reasons that they didn't want to release these documents. And in the end, a judge approved to release these documents, and your name was in the documents. Do you think, or have they approached to you in regards of this? Have they made any type of contact with you, or have it crossed your mind that maybe you could be the, that possible person? No, I don't think it's me at all. Any questions? Hey, I've got so, a question. All right, one more. Ha, have you been sued in any way over this, or? What? Have any lawsuits been filed against you in any way over no. this? Any of the victims, anything? No. Okay. Any questions going this direction? Let's go over here. I do just want to clarify. You said uh, the transaction was common, but then you said that it wasn't common for people to come to your house to pick up uh, whatever that they were buying. Um, can you clarify whether the amount of ammo sold to Paddock was that common? Yes. No. Yeah. Thank nothing. That, nothing at all. Questions? Mark, for you, uh, I've been seeing conflicting reports. Is your client still a person of interest? You know, that's not a decision that I make. That's a function of whether ATF or FBI decides they're a person of interest. They, they could keep him as a person of interest for the rest of his life. It doesn't affect what we do. Sure, but have you been told one way or another? No, and that would be, that would be fairly uncommon for uh, law enforcement to call me and say, hey, Mark, I just want to let you know a client who previously was of interest is now no longer of interest. If, if that happened, that'd probably be the first time it ever happened. All right, I want to thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. And that will end our press conference today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.